Today I'm gonna to walk you through making sourdough discard graham crackers. The first most important ingredient is obviously the discard. So I have a batch that I made and have any left in the fridge. So last night I just refreshed a big batch of sourdough starter. It was about 60 grams of my old starter batch and then I fed it with 150 grams of water, 150 grams of flour. Let it sit all day so you can see that now it's past the active stage. So this one's ready to use and we're gonna jump in and get started. I have my butter melted and cooling. So we get to dive right into making these delicious graham crackers. And then we're gonna let it sit because for this recipe for ultimate flavor and digestibility, they need to sit at room temperature and ferment for at least two hours. And so we're gonna let that happen and we're gonna bake them when it's dark after the kids are in bed. We're ready to mix up our dough. I'm gonna mix by hand for this video. Sourdough discard ready. I have my mixing bowl, food scale, and we have whole wheat flour, all-purpose flour, brown sugar, cinnamon, baking soda and cream of tartar, salt, and whole milk. So we're putting this bowl on the scale, adding our discard first, 100 grams, then whole wheat flour, we're adding 100 grams of that, tear it again, and add 200 grams of all-purpose flour. Then a half teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of baking soda, make sure it crumbles up, and a, about an eighth teaspoon of cream of tartar, some cinnamon, I like to be generous with this, with this, 100 grams of brown sugar to sweeten it up. And I have my melted butter, I'm letting it set aside to cool before we add it, so putting that aside. I'm adding 65 grams of whole milk, a note here is put that in a separate container, it's easier to add that way. And then finally, our whole stick of melted butter that's now cooled is going in and it's time to mix up our ingredients. We want to mix until it forms a dough. Don't over mix, just until you can see that the ingredients are all incorporated together. And make sure you check the sides of your bowl and the bottom and get all that dry flour off and mix in. You can use a spatula or I'm gonna use a hard sided dough, dough scraper to really get the edges of the bowl, make sure the dough comes together. So we're gonna cover it and let it ferment for two hours. Our dough has fermented for two hours at room temperature, so it's time to roll out the first half of the dough. So I get my sheet of parchment out and I divide the dough in half. I can feel the air built up from that fermentation, it's much softer than it was. I form a approximate rectangular shape before I lightly flour and I'm gonna lightly flour my rolling pin. And as you roll the dough, if you find that it's starting to stick, you're gonna to wanna to lightly add a little bit more flour so that your rolling pin is not sticking. And as you roll, you're gonna turn your dough um, at 90 degree angle so you can get it at even thickness all the way across. I'm trying to get it to stay in a square shape as much as possible to create the biggest surface area for, for cutting up our crackers and I'm trying to keep it at 1 8 of an inch thick and you're gonna to wanna to touch it with your fingertips. Your fingertips are so sensitive to be able to touch and feel where those high spots might be forming. And we just wanna make sure it's even. So no high spots and no parts that are getting too thin because anything too thin will burn. Okay, so once we're happy with our thickness and it's even all the way across, we are going to take this first batch and we're going to cut the edges. So cut, cutting off all the edges, this first pan will be nice and neat. The excess dough that I trimmed will go with the second half of the dough. So now I'm gonna cut in six across the dough. I'm scoring in thirds on each side of that half. And this is actually really important because the smaller that you make the, your crackers, uh, the quick, faster they will bake does make a difference how you cut your crackers and then I'm gonna cut in fourth the other way and then after they're cut we actually are going to take a fork and poke each individual cracker as you can see here they're all poked and I want to show you the thickness right before they go in the oven here and here they are after the bake after the crackers come out you want to Pull them off when they're cold to handle them so that they're not sticking to the pan anymore. And this helps to avoid having steam build up underneath them. 
so they can continue cooling and baking and be crisp. You can also put these on a cooling rack after they have cooled. So here is batch one, here is batch two. So let's take one of these guys. They actually taste really good. They look really dark, but they are perfect. So let's see this one. See that perfect crunch inside. Texture, awesome. Yeah. These are everyone's favorites. These funky extra large side ones on the second pan are always everyone's favorite ones. The kids always fight over them. I'm trying to find the biggest ones. So they need a cool for them to crisp up. Let's see how these are doing. Yeah, nice little crunch there. You can see the inside. It looks so good. And they taste so good in milk. On this second batch, I wish I would have gone a little bit longer um, to get more color because these are these are really good, but they're not quite as crisp. They're a little bit softer. So but we're gonna put these guys in a jar for the kids. I hope that video was helpful for you. Please like it if it was and share it with a friend. If you like this content and want to see more, you can subscribe. And down in the description box, you can see some of the resources I'm using, my resource guides, as well as how to find my online courses if you really want to get started and see the whole process of making sourdough. Leave me a comment. Let me know what are you getting stuck on? What would you like to see more of? That really helps me decide what to create for you in the future. Thank you for being here.